In this video, I'm going to walk through the code needed to use data from OpenStreetMap to add context to a map and make it easier to interpret crime data. As an example, I'm going to get the locations of bus stops in the La Candelaria neighborhood of Medellin, Colombia. I'm going to start by adding a comment at the top of the script to explain what the code does, so that if I come back to this code file in a few months, I will understand what it's for. This is going to be quite a long script, so I'm going to break it up using header comments. That should make it easier to read, which in turn makes it easier to track down any problems with the code. The next thing is to load the packages that I need. For this code, I will need the ggspatial package to add a base map layer to my map, the OSM data package to download data from OpenStreetMap, the ESF package to handle spatial objects, and the tidyverse package for various data wrangling functions. The data set I need is the boundaries of neighborhoods in Medellin. This data come in a geo package file, so I can load it with the readSF function and know that it already contains information on which coordinate system that data set uses. Once I've cleaned the column names, I'm then going to remove all the columns except the column that contains the neighborhood names. Note that although I haven't selected the geometry column in the data here, it will still be kept in the data set because SF objects must always contain a geometry column, so it can't be removed by select. I can check what the data look like with the head function. It's always a good idea to look at the data once you have loaded it, just in case the data structure isn't quite what you expect. Now I've loaded the data I need, I can start to wrangle it into the format that I need for the map. The first task here is to extract the boundary of the La Candelaria neighborhood from the Medellin Communis object. I can easily do that with the filter function. The next thing I need to do is get the locations of bus stops in the neighborhood. Since this information isn't available to me in an existing data file, I'm going to download it from the OpenStreetMap database using the OSM data package. The OSM data package expects coordinates to be specified as longitudes and latitudes. So before going any further, I'm going to go over to the console and check what coordinate system the dataset is currently set to. As I can see from looking at the result produced by head, the dataset uses the WGS84 coordinate system. I know that system specifies coordinates in longitudes and latitudes, so I can continue without transforming the data. When we request data from the OpenStreetMap database, we have to specify which part of the world we want data for. That database expects this information in the form of a bounding box. A bounding box is the smallest rectangle that covers a particular area. So the bounding box of the Lacandalalia neighborhood is the smallest rectangle that fits the boundary of the neighborhood inside it. The only information that the OSM database needs to calculate a bounding box is the coordinates of opposite corners of the box, which is why it's common to see bounding boxes expressed as two pairs of coordinates. We can calculate the bounding box by adding the stbbox function to the end of our existing pipeline. Now that we have the information we need in the format that the OSM database needs, we can go ahead and set up the database request. We do this with the opq function from the OSM data package. opq sets up a query to the OSM database in the same way that ggplot sets up a map. I still need to add further functions to it to specify exactly what we want. In this case, I need two more functions, one to specify what categories of location we want to retrieve, and one to specify what format we want the data in. The add OSM feature function lets me specify what types of feature I want to extract from the database. In this case, I want to extract all the features where the OSM tag highway has the value bus stop. The OpenStreetMap database has lots of tags for different features, from buildings tagged as cow sheds to several different types of ski lift. And the final function we need to set up the database query is the OSM data SF function, which specifies that we want the data to be in the form of SF objects. If we run this code, we might have to wait a few seconds for the database to send the relevant data. Once that's done, we can look at the data that the database has produced. We cannot use the head function to do this because the result produced by the OSM database is not a single data frame. So instead, we can print the object by just typing the object name bus stops into the console and pressing return. The result produced by the OSM database is quite complicated, but we can see it contains two SF objects, one called OSM points and the other called OSM polygons. These two objects contain the data we need. To extract these SF objects from the bus stops object, 
we can use the pluck function from the per package. And the per package is loaded automatically by Tidyverse, so we don't have to worry about loading it directly. Once we've extracted the two SF objects, we can combine them into a single SF object using the bind rows function. Because we want to show all bus stops on our map as points, we will also use the stcentroid function to convert any bus stop locations that are stored as polygons, so that they are instead represented as points. This might be important if some bus stops were attached to small shelters or waiting areas that were represented in the OSM database as polygons rather than points. Once again, let's use the head function to look at the bus stop points object. We can see that we've got a single SF object containing one row for each bus stop and lots of columns showing different pieces of data about each one. Now we have all the information we need, we can plot it on a map. As we've covered in other videos, we'll set up the map with ggplot and then add a base map with the annotation map tile function from the ggspatial package. Next, we'll add the boundary of the La Calendaria neighborhood, setting fill equals NA to make sure the boundary shape doesn't obscure the base map underneath it. Now we can add the bus stops locations as points and color them dark red. And finally, we will add a caption to the map to acknowledge the source of the data we are using which is a legal requirement when we're using data from OpenStreetMap. Now we have a map of bus stops in this neighbourhood. We could add other layers to it to help us understand the area. For example, we could add a layer showing the density of particular types of crime in the area to see if any types of crime are clustered around bus stops. OpenStreetMap is a really valuable source of data about many parts of the world. One word of caution though is that because OpenStreetMap relies on volunteers, there are some parts of the world that are less well covered by the database. If you're planning to use OSM data, plot the data on a map before using it in any analysis to see if the locations are what you would expect based on your knowledge of the area.